Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story, where each weekday we offer a brief lesson from a section of today's reading, then we examine a single relevant question that passage points us to. Today I'm joined by Wendy Korbacheski, and we're looking at a passage from 1 Timothy chapter 6. Paul has uh, to address another issue that's cropped up in the church at Ephesus, and um, that is pursuing wealth and and loving money. Uh, The description um, of those pursuing wealth uh, or who love money, he gives us in 1 Timothy chapter 6. And it says, But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. And he tells us some things about people who love money. He says people who love money fall into temptation. People who love money are trapped by harmful desires. People who love money are plunged to run, uh, ruin and destruction. He says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And um, he says some people who love money even have wandered from the faith and they have brought great sorrow on themselves. And he sets this charge up. Um, by the way of contrast. So he, he he charges Timothy. He said, but you, Timothy, are a man of God. So run from these evil things, pursue righteousness and live a godly life, along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Um, the subject of Paul's instruction is based on the fact that he calls Timothy a man of God. And it, it, and it contrasts, this challenges Timothy to become what he already is in Christ. He doesn't just encourage him to run from evil things, but he tells him to run toward or to pursue righteousness. And holiness is this uh, contrastive characteristic. It's the exact opposite of the world around us. Holiness finds its expression in an unholy world. And so the Christian life is a continual process of flight from and pursuit towards, a flight from unrighteousness and a pursuit toward Holiness. So, um, Wendy, holiness before God is a contrast to the world. Mm -hmm. Um, How difficult does that make the Christian life? I mean, the whole concept of holiness or being set apart is difficult, period. Um, And it's something that we need to understand is not doable on our own. I think that's a trap a lot of t- we fall into a lot of times um believing that um it's a, a kind of a a spiritual checklist that we have to do i can do this thing to be holy i can ch- i can you know accomplish this task and i've i'm working towards holiness um of course there are some spiritual habits that you need to to enlist in in order to create a lifestyle of holiness um but to achieve holiness is not a work of your own Mm -hmm. um and so living in and among the world and um setting your setting yourself apart from the world but being um in the world but not of the world um becomes a, a kind of a, a juggling act. It com- becomes a, a real fine um, balance. Next week, we'll talk about uh, how frustrating it can be to see people who are unrighteous and wicked prosper mm-hmm. while we feel like we don't. Right. Sometimes it's not about prospering or not prospering. Um, sometimes it is... Um, we're frustrated because we can't do some of the things that other people do. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was younger, some of those things would have been like, I couldn't wear shorts. I couldn't go to the beach. Mm-hmm. I couldn't go to the movies, you know? Um, but the reality is some of that still has to be a contrast for us today. Right. There still has to be some kind of like differentiation. Yeah. Like you, you can't explain your, 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 there are some things you just shouldn't do, right? I um, had some connection with a 
pastor, when I say connection, I had been on a trip that he was a part of mm -hmm. a number of years back. And um, I doubt most of the podcast listeners would know him. I don't think they would. I don't, I, I don't think anybody even on staff would know who he was except Jay. Um, but in, anyway, there, there came a time he and his wife separated. He mm -hmm. was pastoring a church um, in Tennessee, and he and his wife had separated. And he had filed for divorce, and um, some of his staff got to suspecting that he and his assistant were. It was a strange relationship. Right. So they showed up at his house randomly, like eight or ten of them, and. Um, find him and his assistant mostly undressed. And what he says to them, what the story they weave is that they were cooking chili, got chili all over their clothes, and they were washing their clothes. You know, um, and it, I, I shouldn't chuckle. Some lies are terrible. Like, you know, just own it, right? At that point. Yeah, just yeah, own it. Yeah, making it worse. Uh, and, and since he's resigned, the church has kind of come unraveled. There's not much left of it at this point, which is really sad. Let's say, okay, let's say that what they said was the truth. You shouldn't put yourself in that situation. No. Right? No. I mean, and they're both, she was married. He was not at this mm. point. He's divorced. But you shouldn't put yourself in that situation. And, I mean, you just shouldn't get undressed. I mean, it's his house. He ought to have his own clothes, right? You know, he, he could have put some more clothes Absolutely. on. Absolutely. And and it, it just brought kind of flashes back of the, that whole series we did and study we did from Anne Lee Stanley, that whole guardrail series. Mm -hmm. It's not um, crossing those lines. This goes way before the line. It's setting up those fences way before you ever get to the thing that's going to cause the problem. Yeah, because if you've crossed that guardrail, you're in such danger now that there's not right. a lot of turning back. Right. You know, and we we can like it or not like it. Mm -hmm. You know, we can, but there are just some things we, we, we shouldn't do, can't do, have to be careful about. Right. And th sometimes we see that as like a, like a punishment, how unfair they get people not trying to be holy, get this blank check. But you got to understand there's a consequence to that. Mm -hmm. All you see is them doing whatever and enjoying themselves or having fun or whatnot. But there's a price to pay. Sometimes it's an immediate price to pay. Right. Sometimes it's not. And those are the unfortunate cases when it's not an immediate price to pay. I think those are the worst because you feel like, well, there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. There's no immediate consequence. I can just continue on. Sin always has a price, and That's it right. always impacts more than just you. Yeah. It always impacts more than just you. And you don't realize the influence that you're having on other people because whatever it is they see you doing, mm -hmm. um, they're going to take a step further. Right. You know, there are, there are probably some things. Well, I... So I, I've used alcohol as an example uh, before. I, if you saw me take a drink, right, the thing you can be assured of is that I'm not going to drink till I'm drunk. Mm. If you saw me, like right. that, that's that that would be that the would thing. Be odd anyway. Yeah, I don't enjoy it. It's not. I, I don't have a taste for it. Right. I've never been drunk. Don't know what it's like. Don't want to be. You know. Um, I take that back. There are probably some days it would be nice to escape the real world, but, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going out to do it. H however, the person that sees me do that, they may not have, they may not be in the same boat I am. Right. They may be one sip away from being mm -hmm. off the wagon, losing their job and, and being stole cone drunk for the next 30 right. days. That's, mm -hmm. that's very possible. And so what I, what we have to be aware of, especially as leaders, godly leaders, because that's what he's talking about, is that people will take our actions or our freedom and they'll take it even further. Well, if it's okay for the leader to do it, then I can do even more. It always happens to another right. degree. Your kids are the same way. Oh, yeah. If, you, if mom and dad can do level. it, they're going to. 
they're going to take it even mm-hmm. further. Sometimes it does feel unfair, mm-hmm. right? Even, um, you know, Paul even talked about there were some things he did, but he didn't do them in front of other people because he didn't want to right. have it. He didn't want to be that stumbling block. Yeah, he didn't want to have that effect on use. Yeah. We just have to be aware of mm-hmm. the impact that we're having. So when he tells Timothy, Timothy that he's a man of God, then he encourages him to run or pursue. He's telling him that he should become what he had, what he already is in Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, what, how do you apply that principle to your life? It always makes this makes me think about um, that growth track two lesson. Um, and w- we always point back to that, uh, this scripture in Ephesians um, that speaks to the fact that you are God's handiwork created in advance for his purpose. Just underlining the fact that you were created in advance for a purpose he already had in mind. Like you weren't an afterthought. He had a job, a purpose designed for you to do, and then he created you. It was not like I created Stephen, now what am I going to do with him? He had this purpose. He needed you to do this. So then he created you to fulfill that purpose. And that's the same for every individual that he's called, has drawn him to unto himself. He has a purpose for you. And so just like Timothy, he had a purpose that he had to fulfill. And so he, he Paul's reminding him of that. You are were designed with a purpose. Fulfill that. You yeah. know, fu- lean into that. You were you were designed for a reason. Find that purpose and fulfill it. And live it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In that context of running, so if, if you pursue holiness, you're running from some other things, mm-hmm. uh, you know, run toward, run away from. What are what are some things that you feel like you've had to run from and run to? This one was a soul searcher for me and um, things that you, you, you don't like to look in the mirror <laughs> and see about yourself, but um, the areas of biggest personal growth as well. Um, What I've had to run from in order to grow and spiritually mature is, number one, people-pleasing. Caring too much about what um, people think versus what God thinks. Mm -hmm. Um, Setting my sights on pleasing God first before I'm worried too much about pleasing God people um and college choice career paths i mean i I made some serious life decisions based on pleasing people versus pleasing god that i've had to go back and rework and praise god you know he's been able to redeem that and use it but um that was a big one for me um Another is avoiding confrontation. Man, and I got this one honest from my daddy. He would rather bite his tongue in half than to say a, to engage in a confrontation. And I was just like him. Um, I'd rather take the hit and walk away, you know, just whatever, and just grumble about it and deal with it on my own just fix it on my own or whatever um but as i've spiritually matured and developed and grown it just as an as a person as an individual i've um run to embracing i wouldn't say well embrace might be a strong word (laughs) but understanding the benefits and the the need for a healthy confrontation right at times um uh, and uh, when it's needed and how to do it in a healthy way. Um, because everything's not sunshine and roses and everything can't be avoided. you, you got to hit some things head on in order for there to be um, correction and growth. You know, so those were the two, of the two big ones for me. I'm not a people pleaser by nature. Uh no. <laughs> and I probably, I, I have to bite my tongue, but it's to keep from having conflict, not mm-hmm. not. We are so avoid. diametrically yeah. opposed. Um, so and and I've, had, I've had to work on that. You know, mm-hmm. there are times that 
and and there are times so that whole conflict thing there are times that i don't view things as con as conflict you know for you me, view it as entertainment well no no, <laughs> no. <laughs> there are th- times i just view it as having a discussion you know i've uh-huh. said what i've got to say you say what you've got to right. say but other people walk away from it feeling like, man, this is, I've been in a I, war. I would wear it. It mm-hmm. would be personal, you right. know, and I had, I had, I had to learn some skills in order not to do that. Right. And I don't, I, and that's not how I. And you, you naturally right. didn't do that. I didn't right. do it. I, yeah. You know, when, when we're done, we're done. Right. Most of the time. Right. And the older you get, or the, uh, let me, let me, that's not true. The more spiritually mature you become, the things that you're having to run away from and run toward are completely different. And often they're a lot more refined mm-hmm. than um, they might would be. In your 20s. In, yeah, or 30s or 40s, <laughs> yeah. either one. Yeah. The funny thing is, like, I can, I, I think, I, I don't mind saying this. This is a re record of this day's podcast mm-hmm. um, because we touched on an issue and I th- that 10 years ago, I probably would have said, yeah, whatever, you know, right. there'll be people will be fine. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized, okay, that might not be the best way to present that. So mm-hmm. let's, let's, you know, look at it a, a little bit different. And that is, it wasn't like, I don't, I mean, there would be some people who could make it a right or wrong issue. I don't think it is that. But I think that you um, you you ask yourself a different set of questions the more spiritually mature you get. You know, when you're right. spiritually immature, you ask the only question you ask is, is this right or wrong? Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's not a right or wrong. Sometimes this is OK. This is not the best. Um, I, 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 I could give you another example that. Uh, it really has nothing to do with you or, or I. We, another church had done an, a movie at, at the movies. I don't know how they pulled it off, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because there was a lot of curse words right. in it. But there was a situation in it that for us, we were like, nah, this is a non starter. We right. can't, we can't. We can't use this movie. It just was not wise. Right. It would it would have been in probably any other environment, it might right. would have been okay. But mm-hmm. for our environment, okay, this isn't gonna work and we we should just stay away from this. And it, it wasn't a right or wrong thing. It was okay, we've gotta we've gotta make some choices to pursue the right thing, you know, mm-hmm. righteousness. It's like your field of vision gets a little broader. Mm-hmm. It's like you get to see things a little further up the more you are running towards holiness. It's, yeah. it's a more vertical view. It's certainly more clear. You mm-hmm. know, it's like the difference. So I, I can read perfectly fine. As a matter of fact, I will take them off to read mm-hmm. because it it's not that I can't read with them on. Mm-hmm. It's that it just, it's I don't like it. I don't right. like reading with them on. Um, but at night, particularly at night when I'm driving, if I don't wear my glasses, like everything is fuzzy. I can't mm-hmm. read signs. And then you put your glasses on and all of a sudden you can see clarity. S- everything becomes clear, you know, it's, it's much more defined. And the, the more spiritually ma- mature you get, s- those things should be more defined. Yeah, you know, what was once fuzzy has sharpened. Right. Just a bit more. You know, you get, it's like putting on two different shoes in the dark. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're getting dressed and you're not paying attention, you not don't want to turn the light on to disturb somebody, and you get outside and you go, "Oh my God!" Yeah, well, two, what did I do? Two different kinds of shoes right. on. It it just brings clarity, and I think I think there should constantly be, if you're running toward God, you're going to be running away from ungodliness. Mm-hmm. I think it's a more a less of a self centered view and. And more of a others view. Mm-hmm. You you care more about how it will spiritually impact other people, not what they think or what they think about you, but how it spiritually right. impacts other people. How's it shaping them? Right. It 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 goes through that filter a little more fine. Um. 
the more mature you become. I see this even in unsaved people mm -hmm. when it comes to parenting and then grandparenting. Um, in parenting, you don't often think about how you're shaping that kid. Mm -mm. You know, you're surviving. Yeah, that's you're right. In survival you don't mode. you don't realize the impact everything you do is having on them. But when you get older, you you realize you one you you should have matured and realized the impact that some things had on you and then the impact things had on your own children. And you go, oh, I want to do this different with my grandkids. And so even unsaved people see this shaping mm -hmm. and the minor, the small things, the difference that they make. You know, it doesn't have to be major. Just the power of a word. Yeah. Or just just a few minutes of right. time you know yesterday my one of my grandkids wanted me to go outside and throw the football i was busy i've been gone for nine days i had a pile beside my chair that i was trying to work through and if it had been my kids i'm just saying when my kid when my son was 10 the likelihood that i would have gotten up and went outside and thrown that football was very very small mm -hmm. i would have just been busy but i stopped what i was doing because i know Right. That it's a, it's a shaping moment, and when it, when we talk about godliness and ungodliness, it's not just the effect that it has on the relationship with us; it's the impact that we're having on the people behind us. And right. if we realized how what we were doing was shaping them, it might change the behavior. Well, thank you for joining us today on this edition of One Single Story. We hope you'll be back with us tomorrow as we continue our conversation around our daily Bible reading.